Welcome to the second episode in my series about Copic markers. If you haven't seen the first episode, I definitely recommend you check that out. It is all about the basics of using alcohol markers as well as some good blending and layering techniques. But today we're talking about one of the most important factors when it comes to using any brand of alcohol marker and that is paper. Like I mentioned in the first episode, there is not a right or wrong way to use your art supplies, and I do think that same thing applies to the paper that you choose. However, there are definitely going to be some paper choices where you have a much harder time than others. This video, of course, is just my opinion on favorite papers and the ones that I have found work best for me and the way that I like to use Copic markers. But as always, I recommend trying out different types and experimenting for yourself because the ones that I detest you might find are your favorites and that's totally okay. The papers that I share in this video are just the ones that have worked best for me. So I feel there are five big factors to consider when choosing paper to use with Copic markers and those are bleed, feathering, ink absorption, blendability, and dry time. All of these factors are going to affect how the markers work when you're creating a piece. So I'll be talking about each of them individually in regards to different types of paper. And then I'm going to share my favorite types of paper for using Copic markers with an overview of each one. I'll have my favorites written in the description below too. So if you don't catch the names, you can always refer to the description for what they specifically are. So let's get into it. So I have six different paper types here to work with to show you how all the factors I'll be talking about relate to different types of paper. And we are going to start with bleed. Bleed is referring to how much the markers show through the back of the paper. The more ink you layer on, the more bleed you're going to experience. I don't particularly find bleed to be a problem with the big exception of sketchbooks. If I'm using an individual page for a finished piece, if the back has ink on it and bleed through, that doesn't bother me. Actually, I find it really, really cool to look at the backs of pieces and see the patterns that the bleed leaves. It's always so abstract and fun and I just really like checking it out. But for sketchbooks, that can obviously be a problem. If every page you work on has bleed that goes through to the next page or beyond, that's a lot of wasted paper. Or at the very least, it's paper that is now all marked up and not everyone wants that in their sketchbooks, myself included. So bleed is important to remember as well because it can often bleed through and mark the literal surface underneath the paper, whether that's your desk or table or whatever you're working on. So it's just something to keep in mind so you're not leaving alcohol ink marks everywhere when you work. So on the basic copy paper, this is just uh, printer paper and it basically is not something I would ever recommend you use with alcohol markers, but I just wanted to show you the big differences between this and some better paper options. Obviously, as expected, immediate bleed, it will fully show through on the back. It is going to leave marks on your surface if you're layering really well. Next, we have a basic cardstock. This is not a specific art type paper. It is just the kind you can get at any, you know, like a Walmart or an office supply store or anything like that. It is just slightly thicker than a regular copy paper. It has less bleed, but it definitely still has some uh, show through there for sure, but certainly less bleed than a standard copy paper. We have render paper and render paper is one of those magical papers that is known for being no show through on the back. So it does not have any bleed through at all. This is phenomenally good for sketchbooks and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but render no bleed. Expressive blending card has a decent chunk of bleed, honestly, especially once you start layering. Strathmore mixed media paper, uh, a much thicker sheet. In fact, I think one of the thickest I have here is an example because it is meant for wet media as well. It doesn't have much bleed initially, but it will have more if you were to layer more on there. And the Strathmore watercolor paper, again, a very thick one designed for watercolors. Very little bleed also, but some. Next up is feathering, and this one is a lot more important for your technique compared to bleed. 
So feathering refers to how much the ink spreads from the actual tip of the marker when you use it on the paper. This becomes increasingly important for you if you plan on using your markers for very fine details. If you're trying to render in eyelashes on a small piece and you're experiencing a lot of feathering due to the paper type, that can be really frustrating. Even for just general rendering, if your ink is feathering out significantly, it makes it a lot harder to control the medium and can lead to more frustration. I find using a paper with a very low feathering factor is best for the art that I create. So feathering is a little bit tricky to show because it does require being very, very up close to really see what I'm talking about, but I will do my best. So you can kind of see here on the plain copy paper, when you first lay down some strokes, do you see how that ink kind of spreads out from where I first put it down? It does not stay in this beautiful little petite line. It tends to bleed out around the edges. If you are putting any kind of pressure on there, you're getting a decent amount of feathering. And especially as the alcohol continues to spread out, it gets much, much, much wider compared to when it was first laid down. So I just want to show you that up close on each one to show you an idea of what the feathering is like. Basic cardstock also has a pretty decent amount of feathering, although it is definitely better than the copy paper. Render paper is not too bad. Sorry for the focus jumps there. My camera does not like being this close. Not too bad, but still a little bit there of bleed at the edge with that feathering towards the edges. Expressive blending card is going to be your absolute best bet for low feathering. It basically spreads not at all from when you first lay it down. When you push and let more ink come out of the tip of the marker, it definitely can begin to feather, especially if you have a really juicy tipped marker. So that is something to keep in mind, but for drawing details and little strokes, it really doesn't feather hardly at all. The Strathmore Mixed Media Paper. Pretty comparable to the render paper, a little bit of feathering, but not too bad when pushing down of course allowing more alcohol to come out some feathering and you're going to get these little like veins around the edges there if you can see that is something that is unique to mixed media and wet media papers so that is something to keep in mind and then on the watercolor paper which is really not meant for alcohol ink markers feathering is actually not too bad the paper itself is very textured so of course that's going to be a factor and when you allow more alcohol to come out, you do also get that veining around the edges, much like the mixed media paper, because it is a wet media paper. Moving on to ink absorption. This one is extremely important for two different factors, and the main one is actually going to be your wallet. When using papers that absorb a lot of ink, such as mixed media papers, they're gonna suck a lot more ink out of your markers compared to other types of paper. And this means you'll be purchasing ink more regularly or new markers entirely if the brand of marker you use is not refillable. Ink and markers are quite often not cheap, so it's important to keep that in mind. The ink absorption of the paper is also extremely important for layering. All paper is going to hit a point where it just can't absorb any more ink. When that happens, it can lead to degradation of the paper, such as pilling or even tearing, or it can lead to your markers no longer blending well. The ink will just sit on the surface and get very streaky, you're not going to get very nice color blends, and that is very, very frustrating, or at least it can be. So knowing how much ink your chosen paper is going to absorb is very important. Copy paper is going to be one of the worst options for ink absorption. If you start layering on color really thick, very quickly it's going to hit its limit. When we go in really close up with this, do you see how that ink is kind of just streaking across the top? As opposed to when you first lay it down, how it absorbs right into the paper. So this paper has hit its max and it is going to give you that shine on there because now that paper is no longer, or that ink is no longer absorbed into the paper. It's just sitting on the surface. So also a long enough timeline, I'm pretty sure if you kept trying to go, copy paper would eventually rip because it is not meant for that. <laughs> 
basic cardstock is going to be slightly better than the copy paper, but it is going to have that same factor, but you can get quite decent amount of layers with it for sure. And this becomes important when you are blending colors together because it is often that you're going to need to be layering them up pretty significantly. And cardstock actually does a pretty decent job of holding that color in. Again, you are going to have that bleed on the back, the heavier that you layer it, of course. But it does a decent job actually holding the ink. Render paper, probably going to be one of your absolute best for absorption of ink. Again, I, I don't know what they do to this paper that makes it so good, but you can layer on inks on these. Sorry, I just realized how much my camera is shaking when I am doing this, so I'm gonna try and take it easy. <laughs> Being a little rough with my uh, Copic layering. But you can really put ink on there and not only do you not get any of that shine, it's just solid color. Again, there is no bleed through on the back. It's crazy. We have Expressive Blending Card, a paper that is designed for alcohol inks. So they can hold a very, very good load of ink in them. They are meant for that and it absorbs very, very nicely without sucking it out of your markers too badly the way that mixed media papers or papers designed for wet media are going to do. Again, Express It, once you start to build, really does get that bleed in the back going, but for finished pieces, I don't really find that to be a problem. It really only becomes an issue if it is in a sketchbook, for me at least. Strathmore Mixed Media Paper is a really, really good one for blending and things like that. It is a mixed media paper, so of course it is going to absorb a lot more ink than other things will. But you can put a lot of ink down on the paper without running into any degradation, or I find this to be the least streaky of all options in terms of the Markers sometimes, even on the render and the Expressive Blending card, which are designed for alcohol markers, I oftentimes run into the same streak that you get with the copy paper. Oh, I don't think I can get the shine from this angle, but that shine I showed you before, I find that happens with the streaking a lot on the render and the Expressive Blending card especially. So something to keep in mind, I don't run into that as much with the Strassmore Mixed Media because it is designed to absorb wet mediums but it is going to run your inks down a little bit faster. And then of course the watercolor paper is going to be able to hold a lot of ink. However, of course, it is going to use up the inks in your markers very quickly because it is meant for wet media. Not too much bleed on the back though for that same reason. This leads us directly into the next factor, which is blendability. This one seems a little bit obvious, but it is important. If you use markers like I do, which is in a very soft and blended manner, having a paper where the markers blend together well is of course important, but in my opinion, that's not always as straightforward as it seems. When it comes to blendability, I kind of just showed you a bit of examples of that where the paper for the most part, you can get decent blends on all of these papers. I guess I didn't show you on the copy paper very well, so we'll do a quick little blend here. Despite this paper not being meant for alcohol ink in any way, shape, or form, you can still get colors to blend and work quite well on it. This is really gonna come down to testing it yourself and finding what you find works best for you and how you like to use them. Like I mentioned, I find Strathmore Mixed Media to be the least streaky option while still getting very smooth blends, and that's very nice. The last factor is more of a technical one, and that is dry time. Now, alcohol markers don't have a dry time in the standard way that paints do. Uh, for example, they're not typically wet to the touch or smearable when you lay them down on the paper. However, some papers do have a dry time to them, and that drastically affects the color saturation when you lay your colors down. Dry time is also mainly going to be affected in more pale colors. So I've picked a few pastel type colors here. We have a super, super light skin tone, a yellow, and a uh, very desaturated purple. So the reason that this shows up more in desaturated colors is because you are having a more alcohol heavy solution. So when you first lay down these on things like the copy paper or the papers that are meant 
for the alcohol markers, you're gonna see it look very, very gray toned. This is that super, super light skin tone color. It is called Milky White for the Copic color, by the way. And you can see how gray it looks. And then as it dries, especially here on the Expressive Blending card where it dries very quickly, you can see the difference between this and this when I lay it down. The gray tends to disappear because that's the alcohol evaporating out and you are left with just the dye ink color. And the same thing happens on render paper, but it is a much slower process. The render is still drying and the copy paper is also still drying quite well. Now we'll go to others. So the cardstock, not too much of a difference there. It comes down pretty bright. The Strathmore mixed media paper, there's virtually no form of that. The color you see is the color that it dries to. And it is the same thing for the watercolor paper. So this is really important because if you're choosing colors and you're not well versed in your markers, you might start to color and be like, oh my gosh, this is gray and horrible. This is not what I wanted. But look at the difference between this is it mostly thoroughly dried on render paper. This is when you first lay it down. So this factor is hugely important if you don't know your colors that well of how your markers are going to look. Because when you go to lay something down, it can look drastically different than what it will look like when it's dried. I'll go through and show you with the yellows as well. We'll put some on each page or on each paper. And then I'll go back and show you the difference after they have dried. So again, on the mixed media paper and the watercolor paper, virtually no dry time at all. The colors they look like are the colors they're going to stay. The cardstock has a little bit, but not too much blending card plain printer copy paper and render paper definitely have the most render absolutely takes the longest for the color or for the alcohol rather to evaporate out of and dry down. So keep that in mind when working with it, that it has a pretty significant dry time for final color. Now, when I say dry time, this isn't smearable. It's still not like a wet media, like a paint or a, you know, a brush and ink, but it is not fully dried in terms of the alcohol hasn't fully evaporated. So that will affect your color. So I would say the Express It Now is pretty well what it's going to look like. And so is the copy. So we'll see the difference now when we put these down again of how dark and gray and desaturated they look compared to their final dry. So very important. And lastly, we'll do it with the purple just to see the examples. Again, cardstock, mixed media, and watercolor, pretty much immediate. This is a very desaturated purple, so it is going to look quite grayish even once it's dry because it's just a desaturated tone. But when you go through and put them down again next to each other, you can really see the difference in both how dark it is as well as that color tone difference. Whoops, this one. Another thing, of course, to keep in mind is that while all these colors are the same, you know, from the same marker, they do present a little bit differently on each type of paper. I find that the Strathmore Mixed Media paper is actually the most bold and the most saturated, probably seconded by the render paper. If you put them side by side, you can see the difference in those blues. I think Expressive Blending Card is a little bit more vibrant, but a little bit more lower in contrast. Everything dries down, not quite as uh, saturated, I would honestly say, compared to others. Um, so that is another factor when testing out papers of just to keep that in mind. The last thing to consider, which I think is more apparent on uh, finished pieces, so I will show you that in a second, is actually the texture that the markers leave when they're dried. I know this isn't so much a physical texture, but if we get really close here, do you see how on the printer paper this has a bit of a speckle to it in this teal color here and even in the others? Not all papers have that. And this isn't just because this is like a cheap copy paper. The Expressive Blending Card actually has that heavily as well. So that is something to keep in mind. Things like the mixed media paper have it much less. The render paper has very, very little of it. But that speckly texture look is something that is going to be different across the different papers. Just do a quick sweep through. 
So it is something to keep in mind when picking papers to use that that can have an effect. And I'll show you real quick what this looks like on finished pieces too. So this is an Expanse fan art piece that I did on some of the Express It blending card paper. It was actually the first time I had ever used it. And you can really see when I get down to those details, you can see that texture here in the background, like I was talking about, of that kind of speckled texture. It's a little bit less apparent, I think, in lighter colors when we get to like the skin tone. It's still there for sure, and even in the hair, but it is a lot less noticeable in lighter colors. And when you zoom out and see it on the whole, it isn't even immediately noticeable, but it is something to be aware of and to keep in mind. If you compare that to this piece, which was some Umbrella Academy fan art I did a long while back, this is on Strathmore Mixed Media paper, and when you really get down to it, there's almost none of that speckling. There is some in certain areas for sure, but overall it's a little bit less of that texture when compared directly to the Express It blending card. So again, at zoomed out, I don't think there's too much of a difference between this and this as a finished piece, but it's something that some people may want to be aware of, so I wanted to mention it. There are two little bonus factors that I would like to mention that are a bit more specific, but I do think they're important to consider when choosing paper. The first is the paper's mixed media capability. Now, if you are someone like myself who likes to combine Copic markers with other things, such as colored pencils or fine liners or inks, it is really important, uh, in fact, it's entirely crucial that you have a paper that can work with those other mediums as well, and not all of them do, so just make sure you test that if it's something that matters to you with how you create art. The second is affordability. It is, of course, a big factor in any art supply purchase, and if you have two papers and one is only slightly better than another, but it costs twice the price, for me personally, I'm probably going to go with the cheaper option because I just don't have a huge budget. Um, so just, it's something to keep in mind when choosing papers. You may not have the perfect paper or the best of the best, but if it is affordable and works for you, I do think it's a good choice. So obviously just work within your budget. So now for my personal top three favorite papers to use when working with Copic markers. Number three is Express It Blending Card. This is actually the newest paper that I've used. I started with it just this year for the first time, but it is really, really good. It is a paper designed for alcohol markers, and it does occasionally give me the streaky marker problem, <laughs> but overall it blends beautifully. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that specific paper in this video because I've actually already done an entire specific review of Express It Blending Card here on this channel. I will link it above for you if you want a more in-depth look at this paper. Express It Blending Card is also the most expensive option of my favorite papers. A pack of 25 is about 16 US dollars, which is for an eight and a half by 11 size. That's roughly A4, and that turns into about 64 cents per sheet. My second favorite paper to use with Copic markers is Render Paper. Now, Render, I actually like most specifically for sketchbooks, but I do use the pads of individual sheets too for finished pieces. The biggest reason I love it for sketchbooks is because it does not bleed through the back, like at all. I can layer so much ink on my sketchbook pages and it has absolutely no bleed. It is amazing. I don't know what kind of black magic they use to accomplish this, but I really do appreciate it. The markers blend quite well on them, although there is a really big dry time color difference of when you lay down the marker versus when it's fully dry, so you do need to know your colors really well that you're using, but I haven't run into the streaky factor as much as I do with the Express It Blending card, although Render is in marker-specific paper. Pricing for render paper is a little bit tricky because you can buy sketchbooks or the individual paper pads with the tear out sheets. A pad with 24 sheets, uh, which is for 9x12 size, that's like in between an A3 or A4, is about $11.50 uh, in USD, which is about 48 cents per sheet. And for sketchbook pricing, obviously that's going to depend on the size, but for the 8.5x11 or A4 soft bound cover, which is my personal favorite, it costs about $16 for 64 pages, which is about 25 cents per page. And my most favorite type of paper to use when working with Copic markers is Strathmore Mixed Media Paper, their 400 series. 
Now this might seem like a weird pick, but I find it gives me the best blends, the best layering ability, and the richest color saturation compared to the other two. Being a mixed media paper, it works with many other mediums flawlessly, and it's still really affordable. A pad of 15 sheets at the 9x12 size, which again is in between an A3, A4, it's a little under $8, which is about 53 cents per sheet. I will say though, since this is a mixed media paper, it does use up a lot more ink from my Copic markers because the paper is so absorbent, but I still find it worth it for how well it meets all of the other factors that I look for in a paper. Aside from the testing examples I've given in this video, which obviously are helpful to show some factors, I did want to show you side by side what finished pieces look like on these different papers. And I think it can be easier to view that with an identical image as opposed to trying to show the differences between two different finished pieces. So I actually created two of the image you saw in my last video about blending so we can kind of get into the nitty gritty differences between my top two favorite papers, the Expressive Blending Card and the Strathmore Mixed Media Paper. So for these two pieces, I tried to get them as close to identical as possible, but being originals, of course, there are going to be a few differences between them just naturally. But from this distance zoomed out, you can actually see there are some differences in the paper and the quality just off the bat. I personally think that this one looks a little bit smoother for the background blending. I think you can see the texture of the Expressive Blending card a lot more in this one. I actually think this one too has a better saturation overall and especially contrast once all everything is dried down between the mushrooms and the background. So there are also a bit of differences in color. The fur of the mouse is the same marker for both of these, but this one comes off a lot darker I think and has dried down again a bit more saturated and a bit more rich. And now we'll move into close-ups just so you can really see some nitty-gritty details. So here on the Expressive Blending card top, you definitely have that speckly texture like I have mentioned. I did not run into any streaky issues like I have in the past with this paper this time, so that was really nice. And then moving down to this one, not so much of that texture. I do think on the up close, on the mixed media paper, you can see a bit more of brush stroke in the final version compared to the express a blending card. I definitely think when you zoom out and look back at them, that difference is pretty subtle. And overall, I still think this one looks a bit smoother despite being able to see the brush strokes. I also think that the Express It Blending card tends to combine just a little bit better in certain ways. So if you look at the mouse fur here, there are some areas that are specifically textured with brush strokes to look a little bit more fur-like. But down here, there's a lot more of those brush strokes that are still visible, and those were not all necessarily purposeful. That is just how the paper works. So it's very subtle differences, and this is why I think testing and trying paper is so important because what you end up liking might not be the same as what I end up liking. For me, the Strathmore Mixed Media 400 series is still my top pick. I have not found anything that I like to work with better. That doesn't mean the Expressive Blending card is bad in any way. It's just not my preferred favorite. And there you have it, all the info I have for you about paper and using alcohol markers. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative and helpful to you in maybe choosing and selecting paper going forward. If you have any questions at all about not just paper, but alcohol markers in general, please do ask me in the comments and I will do my best to answer them in upcoming videos in this series. I have one more planned, but can do more if anything comes up that I think needs more time or more video to share. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss out on the last episode in this Copic series and all of my other art videos too, of course. Take care, my friends. Be well. Until next time.